Welcome to this video introducing some of the most used capabilities of Kony Fabric and Kony Cloud. I'm Billy Hollis and I'll be your guide as we look at using Kony Fabric to define data structures and use the data with services based in Kony Cloud. We'll start with how you get a Kony Cloud account and then discuss the kinds of services you can define with Kony Fabric. We'll move on to how you can define data schemas and walk through creating various kinds of services, including object services that work with your data schemas and other types of services you are likely to need when you are building your application. Your first step is to get access to Kony Cloud. To obtain a Kony Cloud account, you need to register with Kony. Here is a link to get you started. You'll need an email and a password that you will provide during the sign-up for the Cloud account. Make sure you keep those handy for all of your work with Kony Fabric. Besides working with data in Kony Cloud, you can also connect to databases such as MySQL, Microsoft SQL Server, and a host of other data stores using Kony Fabric. There are two versions of Kony Fabric available. One is for use just with Kony Cloud, and the other is for on-premise use. We will be using the Kony Cloud version in this video. The on-premise version requires you to install and configure Kony Fabric Server. You can get details about that at the Kony Basecamp address at the bottom of the screen. You can start Kony Fabric in one of two ways. You can get to Kony Fabric from the Kony Visualizer development environment, which I will show in a moment. You can also work with Fabric through a browser. As part of sign-up, you'll receive an email that contains a URL that you can paste into a browser to access Fabric. As I mentioned, I'll be using Kony Fabric from Visualizer to make it easy to test our service configuration. I've created a new project in Visualizer to work with Fabric and inspect the services that I create. In Visualizer, you can start Kony Fabric using the button right there. Once I press the button for Kony Fabric, since I'm in an application, I have the options to either create a new Kony Fabric app or use an existing one as I did in the earlier video series on building the appliance app. Since this video is about creating schemas and services, I'll create a new Fabric app. At this point, the new Fabric app has been created with a generic name. Let's change that name to something a little more relevant. As you can see, Fabric offers several types of services that you can create or configure. They are shown in this area of the main Fabric screen. Let's go over the main ones. Identity services are concerned with identifying your users. They tie into some authentication service. Fabric allows you to create an identity service for lots of commonly used identity platforms, such as Google and Facebook. Kony also offers a built-in identity service that can be configured, and we'll use that one in this tutorial. Integration services are external services that we might want to consume in our app. Typical examples include searching with Google or Bing, or a weather service to obtain the current weather. We'll be integrating a geocoding service from Google as an example during this video. Orchestration services allow you to tie together multiple integration services into a composite service. This is a more advanced capability and we won't be covering it in this video. Object services allow you to configure data objects that hold the data your application needs to work. You can also configure various OData parameters for an object service. We will create an object service to expose data objects for appliances and categories of appliance. The remaining Fabric capabilities include running Node.js packages, which is done under the Logic tab, offline sync for mobile apps that won't always be connected, and custom engagement services for major platforms such as iOS and Android. We won't be covering those capabilities in this video. Let's work with our first service, which will be an identity service, and get a user set up with it. I'll press the button to use an existing service and use the search term user to find the Kony user repository right there. Check that I would like to use that service and press the add button. Now, when I press the close button, I see that my screen of identity services lists the Kony user repository. So I can click it to see the users for that service and to add a new user. The add button is right here. So let's fill in a valid email, which we have to have and a first and last name, 
and then we have to put in a password and the password has various characteristics that it has to satisfy as you might expect so I'm going to paste one in that I already created here paste it in both places and now we see that we have a, a user added successfully if we scroll down in fact you can see the user it's right down here there we are we can ensure that the user works by pressing the test login button right there and then entering the user ID and entering the password. And if we do that, we will see the response that we get back when we attempt to authenticate to that user, including the profile information for the user in case I'd like to use that in my application. Next, let's go back and create an object service. I'll start by pressing the object tab right there. At this point, we don't have any, so I'll press the button to configure a new one. I'll give it a name of appliances service. That's because it's going to hold data for appliances and their categories. I'll specify the endpoint type as storage, and that will allow my appliances data to be stored in the Kony cloud. I'll choose the security level as public, since this is going to be non-secure data accessed by any user. And that's all I need to specify now, so let's press Save and Configure. The next step is to specify the structure of the data that will be exposed by the service. That's done with data models. We don't have any yet, so I'll press Configure New to create one, and I will name it Appliance. It's going to hold the basic data about the appliances, and then I'll save it. Notice that when I save it, that new service now appears in my list of object services. Oh, and it also appears over here in this list of data models as appliance right there. And I can open up that node to see the fields for that particular service. By default, that includes fields that are typical for data objects, such as when a record was created and when it was last updated. To work with fields, select the Fields node, and you'll see right there is an Add button that allows you to put in new fields. Let's put in one for the ID of the appliance. It's unique, and it's a primary key, so let's set unique to true. Set primary key to true. And I will use a number for the, for the key and allow it to be auto-generated. The other fields are entered in much the same way by giving them a name and selecting appropriate attributes. While the video is paused, I'll insert the other data fields for an appliance. And we're back with a fully configured schema for an appliance record. It includes fields such as brand and description and price. And there's a field for a photo URL that holds a link to the appliance's photo. If you've already seen the video series on building a progressive web app, you'll be familiar with this schema since an object service with the same schema was used in that series. Let's go back a level now, and we'll add the next data model to the service. It will be for the category of appliance, such as refrigerator or washing machine. So I'll save it. And then we'll go to that object model, and just like we did for appliances, we will open up the node and look at the fields for it. As before, we have the predefined fields, and we only have two fields we need to create in addition to those. And those two fields will be an ID for the category and a description that holds something like refrigerator or dryer. As before, I'll just go ahead and put those two fields in while the video is paused. And now I'm back with the completed fields, so let's save the definition of that data model. You can see it was saved successfully. And the next thing I need to do is specify a relationship between appliances and category, and it will use that category ID field that you see right there. That relationship will be done on category, so let's, whoops, let's collapse the fields right there and get down to the relationship node right there. And naturally, we don't have a relationship yet, so let's add one. The source object for the relationship will automatically be the category model since that's what we're working off of, but the target needs to be set to appliance. And we also then need to set the matching category ID as the fields that will be matched up for the relationship. And then we press save. 
And that completes the definition of the service, so we're ready to publish. We go to the Publish tab, which is right here, and then select the back end to which we'd like to publish. Sometimes we might have more than one, and press the Publish button right down there. And we can see that the publishing is in progress, and information comes up at the bottom. And in a few seconds, we'll see that the application has been completely published. So let's go back to where we work on configuration of services and get ready to import some data into this service. The easiest way to get data into our data models is to import it from comma delimited files. Here you can see a zip file that contains a couple of those files. I'll show you the category file, which is pretty simple. It's only got category description, category ID, and the other fields that are routinely placed in. And here is the appliances common delimited file with, with the brand and category ID and description and the various things that you saw us put in as data definitions earlier. So let's get these out of the way and get ready to import them. To import these files, we need to go to our environment and find our service. There's our environment right there. And the app services for that environment comes up in a separate window. Let me bring that on the screen for you. It's right here. And we need to search for that appliances service that we were working with before, and there it is. Next to that is an export button and an import button. The export, of course, if you've already got data in there. Right now we want to do an import. So I select import and browse to the zip file that has got that information in it. And that, in this case, is on D, Coney. Application service data for import. So we'll open that and upload it. So our data has been imported and we can check to see that that data is there by selecting an operation here. And we can scroll to the bottom and do a get response. And we can see that our appliance data has been populated. And if we go over to the category object service, we'll see that it's populated as well. We can also use OData parameters to do further testing on our data. For example, if we go back to request input and put in a filter of something like ID equals seven, and then ask for a response, we will get the single appliance that is ID number seven that you see right there, which happens to be this stainless steel refrigerator. Or we can go back and put in a filter based on category, category ID equal three, and then ask for a response. Category three happens to be all the refrigerators. So we see that we do in fact get a lot of refrigerators and we see that the category ID for all of these is three. There's the category ID right there. And there are other OData capabilities. For example, if we take that, well, we can leave that category ID in there and we can actually put in to select just the ID field. And that will get me only the IDs for category ID equal three. That is, it will get me the IDs for all of the refrigerators. And there they are. There are about six or seven of them. We can also specify the order of the records in the response. So let's take out this so we can see everything. And we'll go down and order by the price. And here we see that our refrigerators are in increasing order by price. Now let's go over to category. Clicking back on the service right there. And again, looking up the appliance service that we've been working with and select category right there. Of course, we can carry out the same operations that we did for appliances in categories, but we have an interesting additional one because we've defined a relationship between category and appliance. So we can also use the expand field. We just go down to expand right here and fill in appliance and then get a response. And now we get a hierarchical view of the information with the category as the master record and then the individual appliances that are in that category. So category two of dryer has this Kenmore dryer right here and this Samsung dryer. Category three is refrigerator and it, as you saw earlier, has about half a dozen refrigerators in it. Now these object services are ready to use in Visualizer. 
If you would like to see them being consumed, the first episode in the three episode app building video series shows how to do it, close to the beginning of the video. You may recall that we initially set our service public because it's just consumer based data, but suppose we did want the service to require some sort of login. In that case, we go back to the appliances service definition and go to its base configuration area and right there is where the security level was set. So instead what we can do is set that to authenticated app user. And then we can set the identity service to be the user store service that we configured early in the video. So at this point, if we save those changes, and then we go over to one of our operations in our data service and go to the mapping, which gives us access to the various things we can do, such as get and post. So now if I do a get on appliance, go to the test phase right down here. I have to pick the environment that I'm working in, and that's the one I'm working in right now. So let's do a send, and we find out that we are prompted for user credentials. So let's put those credentials in. You'll recall that the email that I used earlier was coneyuser at coney.com, and I have to enter the password that I put in there as well. And you can see that we are signed in, and we get data on appliances. There they are. Now that I've shown that the service is in fact secured, I'm going to go back to the configuration page for it and change it back to become a public service. To help consume identity services, let me tell you about a couple of things that Coney Visualizer makes available. First of all, if you go down to the login section down here, you'll see that there are some pre-written login forms that you can configure. And if you go to the hikes in Visualizer, you'll see that there is an identity service hike right there. And between those, they will help you understand how to use your identity services to secure your application. I mentioned early in the tutorial that Coney Fabric allows the integration of external services, such as a service to obtain weather information. So let's configure such an integrated service. In our case, we'll do a latitude longitude from an address. That action is sometimes called geocoding. So we start by going back to Coney Fabric. And on the integration tab, I'll press the configure new to create a new integration service. I will call it get let long service. It will be a JSON type service. I know that from the API for this particular service. And one of the most important things that that service needs is a base URL, which in this case will be part of the Google APIs that does geocoding. Now we're ready to save this and add the operation to get lat long. So let's do the save and we'll get here and we see that we have a new operation ready to be entered. In this case, I'm going to call it get lat long. And I need to enter the URL suffix that will provide parameters for this service call. Notice that there are two parameters here. One is the address, and one is the Google Place API key. The address, of course, is obvious. I want to find the, the geocode for an address, the Latin long, but I need to pass in an API key to get permission to use the service. So now we need to finish up configuration on those parameters. You can see here's where I add parameters, and I'm going to need two, so let's just go ahead and add both of them. And one of them will be this address, and the other will be that Google Place API key. For a test value for the address, let's put in the address of Coney headquarters in Austin, Texas. And I will drop my personal Google API key into the default value of that parameter. And I should mention that I've obscured the Google API key because it shouldn't be exposed publicly. You can get your own key at the address I'm showing on the screen right now. And now we're ready to test that integration service. Select the environment we want to use and tell it to save and fetch the response. And we see down at the bottom that we do in fact have a response for the Coney headquarters address. That response can be viewed as a tree or we can just view the raw JSON output. 
we've got the address components. And if we move down a little bit further, we'll see that we have the latitude and the longitude right there. All of these services that we've created are available to use in Kony Visualizer. If we go over to the Project Services area under the Data tab here, we can see that our Identity Service, User Store, is there. Our Integration Service that we just finished working on, Get Lat Long Service, is there. And our Object Services are there for Appliances and for Categories. I hope you've enjoyed seeing some of the most important capabilities of Kony Fabric used with Kony Cloud. For additional resources on the Kony App Development Platform, visit the location shown on the screen for all kinds of samples and articles.